Yeah, welcome and hello to our next webinar with the topic uh, Room Automation with KNX. Yeah, my name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel. As always, I will conduct uh, the webinar together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, who is sitting next to me. Uh, he will continue with the second half of this webinar. Yeah, what we are going to do is today is uh, Room Automation with KNX. So we will talk about, of course, our solutions with KNX, the components and uh, arguments, of course, projects. And furthermore, we will go into a bit special uh, solution with the room scenarios we have in the room master. Uh, also, we will talk about the scenes. So let's have a look. It's a presentation, of course, and around one hour it will take. And if you want, you can give us some questions in between in the chat room. You see on the lower right side the option to send uh, a chat, a question to us, and we try to answer it during uh, the webinar directly. If not possible, then we will give you a feedback email with all these uh, slides and uh, the recorded video file as well. And then, of course, also the answers to further questions if necessary. Good. Yeah, let's start. And to improve uh, the performance of our system, allow me to switch off my video screen here. But of course, you can listen to me and also see everything I will show to you. Good. Let's start. Room automation with KNX. You see here uh, some of our components. On the left, uh, the room controller, the box more or less for decentralized installation, and on the right, our room master. And one typical kind of project here is uh, a hotel room, a guest room equipped with KNX, and with our room solution, of course. We will see how it works later on. Yeah, what are the trends in building automation or building installation? We have yeah, an increasing number of applications in the room, uh, increasing functionality, more and more specialties we need sometimes in rooms. Um, a further trend is in some projects, some countries, decentralized installation means I install the components uh, for room automation next to the room, uh, resulting in less wiring and less fire load, uh, which is also a topic. For example, also in hospitals, a big topic. And to have a room dedicated solution and also a cost optimizing solution um, leads also in, in less costs yeah, and less time to, to install or to assemble or to design the whole project. Yeah? So our target is to have dedicated solution based on KNX yeah, for specific rooms, for specific yeah, units, could be also collection of rooms and uh, that's our target with our KNX room solutions. Yeah, what kind of functions we are talking about, of course. Lighting control, switching, dimming, maybe light scenes. Later on we will see the topic room scenarios, which is a bit more than a light scene, with some more options. Uh, in some projects we have also constant light control. So everything around lighting is possible. Uh, furthermore, the control of shutter and blinds. Uh, curtains, so any motorized application, of course. Additionally, heating, cooling applications, uh, also together with fan call units. And sometimes more, more specific solutions, could be in a hotel room, we will see later on, but also, for example, security solution, any, any uh, technical alarm shall be integrated, um, any emergency call shall be uh, activated from the room itself or from the apartment. All these things are possible with our room solutions. Yeah, what kind of projects we are talking about? So typically office buildings, schools, uh, hospitals or of course hotels, I already mentioned this, um, apartments. So all these projects have normally a lot of rooms, the same style, the same type, uh, with, with similar or even the same functions. Yeah? And if you create there one solution for one room and it works and it is accepted, of course, then we can have a kind of copy and paste functionality, means we create then the next room the same way. And um, maybe you can uh, install one mock-up room to show your customer everything, how it works. And then it's much easier later on to implement the big number of further rooms you have to do in this project. Yeah. So let, it, let's us, let us start with the room controller, RCA. You see here this component for decentralized installation, typically in the, in the false ceiling or on the underfloor, available with four and eight module slots, but I will come to some, some details of this solution. Um, important is it, it has only a height of 50 millimeters, 
so it should be possible to install in any of these uh, de decentralized locations like fault ceiling or underfloor normally. Yeah, and here you see the functions around this component. We have discussed already a bit. Uh, lighting control, any kind of lighting control, shutter blinds, curtains, heating, cooling control, typically. Of course, you need any way of, of operation. So typically, you connect, connect your, your conventional push buttons because we have a lot of binary inputs available if you want in such a device. So easy and cost efficient uh, operation via conventional push buttons. Um, but you see here also some special sensors like any security sensors with a potential free contact or, or contact at all can be linked here as well. If you would like to have temperature control, then of course you need also temperature controller, room thermostat, which will be an additional KNX device also in this solution. But uh, all the other in and outputs we need normally can be integrated completely here in this room controller. So it consists of, in principle, a base unit, a basis unit. Um, you see here the housing at least. Uh, later on you see also what's inside. Um, allowing us to connect either eight modules or four modules. And what is a module? A module is a functional element um, described here, listed here. And you see the, uh, yeah, the, the components which are, or the modules which are available. First of all, binary inputs to connect our local push button or technical sensor, whatever. Potential free contacts or contacts with 24 or 230 volt can be connected, different modules. Then, of course, the switch actuator modules, 6 ampere or 16 ampere. Um, here, in this case, with two channels each for per module, then shutter modules uh, to connect motors, either 230 volt or DC, low voltage motors, for curtains, for example. Switch dim actuator modules, 1 to 10 volt. Also possible to connect here a light sensor for constant light control, this module. And then also for any halogen lamps, for example, any power dimmer, up to 300 watt, one channel only, one module. And last but not least, electronic outputs, mainly used for, for valve control. Um, if I talk about heating, cooling, ventilation control, we cannot only control valves, but also fan means, if you want, you can connect also here fan coil units. And then we combine not only one module to the solution, but maybe two or three, depending on the number of fan speeds, to a complete fan coil unit control solution. Well, that's via software possible. Yeah, and any of these modules can be inserted in these three slots of the room controller to create your own, yeah, let's say, solution you need for the room. Yeah, so it's, it will be an individual solution. And though it's, there might be a lot of modules inside, it's only one KNX device. Yeah, one physical address and uh, not more. Yeah, looking into the device, you see here on the right side, so yeah, in principle, the the bus coupler, um, where you connect uh, your KNX here, uh, KNX connection, but we have also here power input. For the 8 volt, it's a three phase input, which each phase up to 16 ampere power or current. What does it mean? The power input is not only for the device itself, but also for the loads connected here at these yeah, actuator modules mainly. And each module slot is assigned to a phase. So maximum you see here, uh, three outputs or three modules uh, are connected to one phase. And if you have actuator modules only here, you have to take into account or have to take have to accept that you need, as you can have only 16 ampere in total. Yeah? But it's a room solution, and in most of the cases it's enough. So three phases in total, and you see here the allocation of the phases to the uh, module slots. Uh, each connections here is pluggable, you will see later on as well, so it's easy also to remove here the connection. Um, so you can work with a pluggable installation here as well. So the wires will go through these cable entries here in the housing to the real load behind. Uh, again, one KNX device, independent of the number of um, modules in use. The same principle with a 4 volt room controller, RCA 4.2, means you can insert here uh, four modules, any of these uh, modules I've shown to you already, 
Um, difference here is that we have only a one phase power input up to 16 ampere powering or energizing all modules behind and all loads behind. Yeah? So it's, it's a real room solution. Maybe the 8 volt is also in use for uh, more than one room, depends on the situation. Yeah, yeah a more detailed view to this uh, bus coupler part. Power input I mentioned already, KNX connection. Um, we have additional 24 volt uh, connection possible if, for example, you have to, to energize a DC motor or curtain. Could be also 12 volt, so for these 24 volt uh, shutter actuators necessary. Yeah. And then additionally we have here a manual operation uh, available means I select with this button a module, so you can jump through all the modules, will be shown here with an LED, and then with these four buttons you have the option to operate it manually. So module-wise you can operate manually, step by step, and um, the beauty of the solution is it works also without any programming. So after giving power to the system you can already operate all these modules manually without any KNX programming. Yeah, small look to the ETS applications, I don't want to go into details. It's a so-called plug-in software, so you, if you click on the parameter button, this window appear here, will, ap will appear here, and, and you see here on the right, on the upper right side, you can select for each slot which kind of module is connected or is inserted. So it won't be detected automatically, you have to uh, give the information to this uh, solution here, to the system, and if you have it assigned to a module, then you have of course you have also dedicated parameters per module, similar to the uh, parameters you know from the conventional Dean Ray components. Yeah. Additionally, you can link here also group addresses, um, so the communication objects for the module selected will be shown here on the lower left side, and if you click on this link button, an additional window will appear, allowing you to assign group addresses to the communication object. So you can do it directly in this plugin, um, you can also create newer group addresses here, or you see, of course, the existing group addresses, and then via drag and drop you assign the group addresses. Not really different from directly uh, working in the ETS, but here it's also integrated in the plugin. If you want, you can do it also on the, on the classical ETS level, it's also possible, but here it's much easier and you have a much better overview. Uh, because there are a lot of communication objects for these numerous uh, modules available. Yeah, the modules itself, some more details here. You see here the pluggable connections. Um, uh, this might be here a switch actuator module with two channels. The power input, if you insert this module into the base unit, uh, is here in the platine connected or uh, uh, available. And down there at the bottom of the device is a yeah, um, communication part, uh, internal communication necessary. Or available and but you insert only uh, such a module into this uh, base unit and then it's fixed and you connect only your loads normally then or if it's a binary input you connect your push buttons here yeah manual operation we discussed already a bit you see it here some more details so practically you work like this you mount the device plug in the modules connect your end devices here to all your outputs you apply the voltage, of course, uh, and then you can already start to test via manual operation, as already mentioned. Uh, easily possible also for a person who is only installing and uh, not responsible for the programming part, he can do it directly. Yeah, let's summarize the top arguments for this room controller solution. Uh, first of all, you see here a possible solution. KNX is going to all these room controller in each room, maybe one. And of course main supply necessary to each of these uh, room controller and from the room controller you go directly to your loads or if you have also your, your inputs in the room, your contacts or your push buttons in the room. So let's summarize. Mounting and testing on location as already discussed. So it's decentralized installation Simple manual operation is available with, uh, without any uh, prior programming. Um, 
Flexibility is a topic here because, okay, you have modules, you can create your own product. If not all module slots are in use, you can also extend later on or change something. So only changing or adding something in the module, uh, sorry, in the room controller, some modules, and of course then you have to go to the ETS and uh, yeah, parameterize this, download this, and then it's a maybe partly new solution. Yeah. Quick planning and installation. Remember my, my one of my first slides, if you have a project with the same rooms all the time, you create one solution, test everything, and then you copy only. Yeah. Both in installation, but also in, in ETS programming. Uh, pluggable installation available thanks to these pluggable connectors in each module, but also the mains power is pluggable, so everything is pluggable. You have a complete closed solution with uh, an own housing um, protection IP54, so it can be directly installed in the room without any additional whatever distribution board or box or cabinet or whatever. Uh, and it's made if you want to connect conventional push buttons, you have to use also these binary inputs as a module then and can work with conventional cost efficient uh, push buttons. Of course, it's a KNX device, any KNX push buttons can be used as well. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, single device per room or per unit. Unit means maybe two, three rooms together. So you reduce the number of KNX devices because it counts as one KNX device, one physical address only, independent of the number of, of modules inserted. Yeah, Installation in the underfloor or uh, false ceiling should fit in all these uh, locations, no problem. Structured cabling and shorter cabling in total means reduced fire load because I go directly from the, uh, from the component here to the loads, uh, not to any uh, distribution board anymore. So that can be a benefit in a project. Yeah. Power supply for the connected loads, of course, yeah. um, but you still need a KNX power supply, so there is no KNX power supply integrated. Yeah. So it's a classical KNX device first of all and um, any KNX power supply is still necessary. Yeah. yeah, if you want, you can use such a room controller also as a standalone solution. Um, what does it mean? You have inserted your modules with in and outputs. Temporarily, you need, of course, a KNX system behind to program in and outputs to each other with each other, to connect everything with each other. And then you can disconnect KNX. And with the power supply of the device itself, it, it works as a standalone solution. And of course, all loads are also connected. Yeah? So maybe as a complete standalone solution or you have to use it temporarily, temporary only as a standalone solution because KNX is not yet working or comes later maybe. KNX installation in, re in a renovation projects, for example, could be a situation and at least the room solution is already working. Any networked functionality comes later on then maybe. Could be possible here. Yeah, I would stop here with a room controller and give you some more information now about the room master family. Room master, yeah, here a first glance to a typical solution. And now we talk about a DIN-RAIL component installed in a distribution board. But you will see later on also for decentralized installation, uh, a typical product. Yeah, similar functions we discussed already with any loads connected, lamp, sockets, uh, heating, cooling, um, motors, curtains, and again, Conventional push buttons normally connect to this device because you have a lot of binary inputs here available. Um, as it's a KNX device, of course, we have also remote access available, whatever it means. And if you talk about room temperature control, you need here also your room thermostat. Shown here as a second KNX device inside uh, the solution or the room. You see already some connection. Green means KNX communication, it's clear. Uh, maybe also to KNX sensor. Black connection means the loads, the power connections. And the blue, double arrow here, indicates internal control. What does it mean? I can directly connect from an input to one or more than one output internally uh, or inside the device 
um, to have a functionality of course you need no group addresses to do this it's an internal connection easily possible via the software the ETS software um, and further option we have here in these devices yeah function I think I can jump uh, uh, talk about this very quickly here the function in the room so power supply for any sockets lighting control heating cooling shutter blinds curtains switching any load and here two examples of a bit special function you have mainly in hotel rooms so any outdoor indication uh, please do not disturb make up the room for example uh, or room occupied can be yeah created with the solution as well I will you show show you later on one other picture and here in communication outside the room an emergency call maybe linked to any any uh, yeah, visualization in the in the reception for example so then we need a real KNX network behind because it's an external alarm yeah. could be easily possible our emergency push button is connected to the input of the room master and alarming will be done via KNX yeah I start with the room master 2.1 which is a mainly used uh, room master for hotel solutions um, you see an overview of all in and outputs uh, four outputs with up to 20 ampere you find here then we have six ampere outputs six in total shutter output as a change over contact and here our fan coil unit outputs which consists of three outputs for fan speed and valve outputs here for different kind of valves uh -huh. these three fan outputs can be also programmed as normal outputs for any control of individual circuits yeah. Now there are further outputs, 6 ampere, 3, and in total 18 inputs yeah, for typically all these push buttons, um, window contacts, keycard reader in a hotel room, master switch you might have, all these things can be connected here directly. Yeah, and if we talk about a hotel room solution, which is one of the main applications, but not the only one for the room master, you will see later on uh, the further devices. Uh, not directly only for 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 uh, hotel rooms but let's a look let's have a look to these typical functions most of them I've discussed already um, you see a window contact as a further solution you might link to the room master the master switch yeah. emergency call in the bathroom and here outside indicators for typically uh, make up the room do not disturb or room occupied yeah. as a local information outside the room but of course if you want you can send this information also to the reception uh, for any action uh, that can be taken there yeah how does it looks like an installation a room mass is a component for the Dean rail installation of a rail uh, but typically in the room you might have only a, a small distribution board a small box with your room master installed with your conventional line protection devices you might need maybe any any power supply 24 volt for the bell for example and maybe one or two additional KNX devices the room master has no dimming function for example it's not available in this device if you need additional dimming outputs you have to install an additional dim actuator it's KNX no problem we have components to create your complete room solution whatever it means Yeah, here an example. I will enlarge this picture in the next two slides a bit. Um, a typical, let me say, room solution uh, in a hotel room with all in outputs connected here to this room master. And uh, I will come to this in the next slide a bit more detailed. Um, but this example of connection of in and output, yeah, for this solution we offer you also a pre-configured application. So if you want, you can use directly this internal communication between all these in and outputs um, plug and play is a topic here you connect all your in and outputs only your loads and then, <coughs> then it will work already as a yeah standalone solution uh, together with a room thermostat yeah. okay it's a KNX device you need all the time here KNX power supply otherwise it does not work and the energy to all your loads comes from external so not from not from any internal connection of the room master itself that's different from the room controller but let's go to the more enlarged display here at least uh, here in this slide of the 
the upper part of the room master and you see all the loads connected here any sockets any lights of course your your HVAC solution which is typically a fan core unit in hotel rooms maybe a curtain is connected here to the shutter output and if you look down to the more input part here also sensors are connected push buttons but also window contact uh, key card reader you might have in the hotel room normally yeah so all these things can be connected and furthermore here some outdoor indicators I've just mentioned already room is occupied and so on so this internal connection and communication internally could, could be uh, done with this uh, pre-configured application we offer to you if you want you change only uh, selected inputs here or selected outputs selected channels to create your own solution you take or you accept only part of this pre-configured application or you say no it's completely not what I want I design the project or the room master from the scratch uh, and create my own complete solution either possible every in and output is completely um, yeah freely programmable but maybe this pre-configured application helps you already a bit Just an overview for the Room Master 2.1, 12 modules with 18 inputs, 21 outputs. No auxiliary voltage necessary for the, for the component itself, for the power uh, of the load, of course, you need external power connection. Important is that this device counts like two KNX devices regarding power consumption from the KNX bus, up to 24 milliampere, which is possible but of course we have to make it transparent so if you design your project with power supplies and lines and so on you have to count this device as two devices very important but it's only valid for the room master 2.1 not for the other room masters you will see later on and um, but it's important to know yeah application program with pre parameterized functions available as already mentioned one room one solution and conventional push buttons can be connected which is a typical solution for this device uh, because we have a lot of inputs there and uh, normally used with conventional push buttons. Yeah, let's come to the other room masters. Um, RMS 1.1 is a smaller version of the RMS 2.1. Same principle, same concept, only less in and outputs. So the HVAC part is always existing in the room master and 1.1 as well, but only three outputs left and eight inputs here. So it's only a reduced version of the Room Master 2.1. All the other functions I've just mentioned is also here available. Internal connection, for example. Let's give you also here an example of uh, a possible solution with this Room Master 1.1. And here we have uh, an example for combining conventional installation. I show it in the next slide a bit, la a bit larger with KNX. So let's go to the next slide. Here you see the possible solution. You say, okay, three outputs is not enough for all these channels I need in my room. Uh, what shall I do? You can create the following. You have a conventional installation with a, a switch here to your lamp loads. And five circuits together will be linked or will be connected to one relay of our KNX Room Master 1.1. So if you leave your room, you remove your keycard. It will be switched off. Here is a central relay here. Um, but if you return to your room, you insert the keycard and power will be given to these five outputs again and you can switch manually on and off. Yeah. Or you use a room master with more dim actuator, dim actuator you might need or other components to create your complete solution. Depends on the situation, but this could be a solution here, this combination of conventional and KNX installation. Yeah, and uh, on the bottom for the inputs you connect all these superior let me say sensors you need master switch window contact emergency call whatever but not the local push buttons for light operation in the room yeah we have two other room masters room master 3.1 and 4.1 it's easy yeah to to understand now because it's a bit less let's say so here in the room master 3.1 uh, we have four switching outputs, 20 amp, up to 20 ampere, and four shutter and blind outputs for 6 ampere loads and 12 binary inputs. Yeah. 
uh, so a bit different hardware in in outputs but functionality is very similar so we talk about internal connections we will explain later on a bit more detailed we talk about room scenarios not yet mentioned but will be explained by Jürgen in some more in some more details this is a very interesting specialty in the room masters in all the room masters and only available in the room masters and only available by ABB to create very interesting solutions in the rooms without any additional let me say logic or further devices so it's in kind of intelligence we will see later on yeah such a room master 3 one can be used for different kind of projects also hotel rooms but maybe other component uh, other projects like retirement homes or apartments and I think in the next slide you see a possible situation in an apartment you use the room master 3 one for lighting control six circuits here and two shutter blinds curtains you have here so I use only four motor outputs here these shutter outputs will be used for lighting control which is possible uh, you can let me say downgrade these outputs here to, to normal switching functionality and you use only two for motor control and here again our inputs for all the push buttons or whatever sensors you have yeah. emergency maybe also emergency button here could be used as well so a simple more lighting and, and shutter uh, oriented solution and with also emergency call uh, to the reception maybe Yeah, and then finally the 4.1, which is e even simpler. Uh, eight switching outputs left only with 6 ampere, so you see no menu operation here anymore. And yeah, eight binary inputs again for our um, local operating elements. Yeah, again the same functionality with room scenarios, internal connection. We will explain later on, and yeah, also an example here. So there is no shutter outputs left, no heating cooling outputs left. So Room Master 3 one and 4 one have no no heating cooling application possible. So simple lighting control here for the Room Master 4.1, eight outputs and the <coughs> dedicated inputs for the local push buttons. Again, it's a KNX device. Maybe it's not complete. What you find here in the Room Master, you can add additional other KNX devices. Dimmer shutter output, fan call units, or fan call controller, or fan call actuator, something like this. Could be possible. Yeah, to see the main functions here of the Room Master 3.1, it's for the inputs mainly switching, dimming, shutter control, with external actuators of course, because there's no, no dimming output available here. You can send also values, and for the switching output you can send up to three telegrams out of the component uh, to create a, create a kind of group functionality for example. Outputs are also a bit limited uh, compared with the traditional KNX output but the main functions you have uh, staircase functions on off delay, flashing is also possible for alarming maybe, staircase time adjustable, presets, logic also available so more or less the same like the, the normal switch actuator and um, so with a lot of options here. Yeah, um, I just mentioned for the Room Master 1.1 one, one and 2.1 one, we have pre-configured applications for hotel rooms. For the Room Master 3.1 at the moment we have different pre-configured projects for apartments, for different kind of apartments. Yeah? So these um, applications we offer to you on internet, you will see later on the link uh, on our homepage to this um, application you can download. You can download into the device, as you can download from internet and download into the device later on and then you have already um, yeah, a running solution with internal communication, internal connections between in and output. Some documentation is also available. So it's really plug and play, but again also here you can change selected channels uh, later on um, if it's not completely fitting to your requirements, but in principle already a uh, a pre-configured solution we offer to you here. So five different apartment types are available at the moment for the Room Master 3.1. Yeah, so we offer you then not only the, the ETS project, ETS4 project, but uh, also a small documentation to see what kind of functionality is here available. Yeah, so such a 
sheet will be available or is available for these different kind of uh, uh, projects which we, we offer to you. And here can you insert your, your real functions, what is behind, which push button is here connected and so on. So you can complete this with your own uh, words here. Yeah. And this is an overview of the internal connections of in and outputs. Yeah. Maybe you need to connect it to further external devices and you will write it down here. These additional let me part of this sheet. Yeah, this picture more or less we have seen already. So let's summarize again. Room Master 3 one as an example here. It's for shut up line control, lighting control, conventional push buttons for remote control, of course, <laughs> also possible. We have the internal connections and KNX communication, of course, and the loads connected and inputs. Yeah. So I would stop here with the overview of these room masters. Jürgen will continue now with the concept of programming with seeds, first of all, with scenarios. What does it mean? And um, as already mentioned, it's a unique solution within the rooms, uh, sorry, in the room masters. Just a moment, please. Hello and welcome to the second part of this webinar, Room Automation with KNX. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I'm talking about the software uh, what is inside our room master? So let me switch off the webcam. Just give me a second. <coughs> okay, let me start uh, by explaining the concept of the programming. At first, the KNX room master works like a standard KNX device. So we can assign group addresses <coughs> to the communication objects of the binary inputs, like here and to the communication objects of our switch, act, uh, switch outputs like here or the shutter outputs or of the other outputs like our fan coil outputs. And then this device works like a standard KNX device. You have, uh, you know it from all other KNX devices. This is not you, this is our standard principle. So, but what is new in our room master? It is possible to link internal inside our ETS application an input to an output yeah, without using group addresses. So you have not to create group addresses like you did it before. Inside our ETS parameter window you can link one input to this output or for example the same input also to another output yes, without creating group addresses in a very easy, easy way. So in this device you need no additional group addresses, only internal between the inputs to the outputs. This is a new concept. We uh, have this possibility in all our four room masters available. When we have a look inside our ETS parameter, fins, uh, parameter window, so the first step is to enable here an input, like for example here my input number A, B and so on. I have enabled here my input B as a blind sensor. I enable an output, for example the output E and F, to switch uh, to control my shutter and blinds for driving up and down and stop and then I go back again to my parameters here of my input yeah, then I can set some parameters and I have here a new parameter which is called internal connection with blind output so when I say yes yeah, then I can select which output I want to link with my input so then I can select for example here E and F it means when I click here or when I close my, my input number B by my standard push button, yeah, my output E and F is closing and my shutter drives up and down yeah, depending on my parameter settings without creating group addresses. So we link an input to an output. This is a very easy way yeah, also for beginners and you have not to create group addresses. This is the principle of the internal connection. And of course you can mix both things. Yeah, you can create group addresses and you can send group addresses for example yeah, from the KNX sensor or from a maybe other device into the room master yeah, and switch for example here an output or drive and shutter and you can close here a binary input maybe your emergency button and send here a group address to your central to a reception desk or somewhere. And other inputs, maybe like this one, yeah, sends, uh, is linked internal to this output. So we can mix both of these principles. 
or you can create gr status group addresses and assign these status group addresses to all your outputs and link only your internal uh, your inputs internal here to your outputs and then when you close here your sensor your shutter drives up and down and then he sent the, the status back here maybe to your panel or to your visualization system so this is the also the possibility to use here the internal link internal connection and using group addresses and this principle uh, is used in all our four room masters so the next step uh, i'd like to uh, refresh the principle of the scenes what is a knx scene so we have different possibilities to use scenes yeah, and the first one is we need we use another piece of hardware, for example a scene controller. This is uh, what this was quite common at the beginning of the KNX system. Yeah. Or another possibility is to store the scenes in a sensor and the third solution in an actuators. So I'd like to show you these three step uh, these three possibilities step by step. So the first possibility to use a separate piece of hardware like a scene controller like for example our logic module or it can be also visualization uh, or something another piece of hardware the principle is we have here our sensor it can be the universal interface or a standard push button knx sensor and then we press here one button and send a knx telegram to our so-called scene controller we call here the scene and then the piece of hardware the scene controller sends maybe six or eight telegrams to our output a output d and so on uh, and controls our different channels including these telegrams we have also the value up and down or 50 percent 80 percent yeah but the uh, disadvantage of the system is we have here one telegram and then he sends multiple telegrams so we have a high bus traffic but this was the principle of the beginning of the knx system to use another piece of hardware the next step was to integrate this scene controller into a sensor so we have the same principle we have here a standard knx push button yeah, we can press here one rocker and then we call a scene when we call the scene the sensor sends also more telegrams maximum eight telegrams eight different telegrams including the value on off up down 50 or 80 percent this is the second principle when we use the scene function um, in this case we are limited to maximum eight different group addresses so we have more traffic on the bus and we're sending also here the value this is also principle which is quite common today and the third solution is by using the so-called scene functions in the actuators so now all our ABB actuators supports these features of the so-called 8-bit 8-bit scene <coughs> it works like this we have a sensor the sensor sends a scene or when we press here the button then he sent one telegram this is a 8-bit telegram and sends a scene the number of the scene for example 17 the maximum number of scenes can be 64 so by sending one group address we can send uh, a command with up to 64 different scenes and inside the knx devices which are not limited we can have here maybe two knx devices or 100 5000 it doesn't matter all these devices are linked with the same group address uh, with one group address we can call up to this 64 and inside the actuators there is the information of the value so for example we send here only the command scene number 17 he receives the group address maybe the channel a is linked to this group address and then he knows oh scene number 17 he looks inside his memory i have to go to 50 percent channel b oh scene number 17 i have to go to 30 percent so the real advantage is here we send only one group address one telegram and all the devices unlimited can listen to this telegram yeah, and goes to this value up down or on off and maybe for example here different brightness this is the standard of these scenes we are using today in our knx world this is so called 8-bit scene 
Here's an example, like in a residential apartment or building, for example. Now when we go to bed, we have a so-called good night scene, which is the scene number four. So we press here our rocker, send one telegram, which is called scene number four with one group address. And then, for example, here in a dim actuator, channel A is not linked, not assigned to the scene. So channel A is doing nothing because this is in my bedroom. Yeah. They should not listen to the scene. Channel B should listen to the scene, so he has the value of in the switch actuator in the kitchen, for example, the light A, channel A is also linked, so he goes off, the socket outlets go off, the channel C, the light in the living room goes off, and the bathroom, but the channel E, which is the light in the children's room, is not assigned. So this light uh, is not, uh, not switched on or off by calling this good night scene. The shutter actuator, yeah, the, all the shutters drives down, all the blinds, yeah. and additionally we can also control maybe the security module and set internal our alarm system over the night. Yeah, this happens only by sending one telegram yeah, with the scene number four. Yeah, on the morning when you wake up, we press the good morning button in our master bedroom. Yeah, then some, he sent the command scene number six. Yeah, into our KNX line and then some devices which are linked with this scene number six react maybe here only my output number B yeah, the socket outlet so the coffee machine maybe is going on yeah, and the shutters here in the kitchen or in the, in the bathroom living room drives in a position maybe up or 50 percent and the security module maybe goes in the mod unset so this happens only by pressing one button and send one telegram into our KNX world so when we're using also this kind of scene functions, later you will see in our room scenarios. Good so far, a small uh, refresh of these different possibilities to use scenes. But in our room master, we have more than scenes. We have the so-called room scenarios. Yeah, but what are room scenarios? Let me explain it step by step. The number of room scenarios is limited up to 16 per device, so we can have 16 different kind of scenarios. Maybe, for example, we come inside in our room, we insert the key card in our reader, we remove the key card, yeah, or for example, we check in our hotel room, yeah, or we check out. So the maximum number of scenarios in one KNX Room Master is 16. And each of this room scenario can be activated by sending a KNX telegram maybe from another sensor or from the reception desk or we can call also these room scenarios via a binary input which is one of the input of our room master and then when we call this scenario the room master can send different kind of telegrams to the KNX world and can for example via the internal link switch or drive for example or control some devices which are hardwired to our room master <coughs> So this is the possibility. We have external commands, maybe for example from the reception desk. Now the hotel guest checks in, he checks out, yeah, or maybe the room is uh, standby for, for free, for example. Then he receives via the KNX, maybe from the reception desk, a telegram and calls the room scenario. Or for example via the internal commands like uh, the binary input. We have our emergency button, the bathroom, someone needs help or our master switch on the bedside, someone press it, or we remove the key card or we insert our key card. Yeah, then we call also via our internal commands this room scenario. Or of course via a standard KNX sensor in the room, yeah, or via the room thermostat, for example, we can, we can also operate it. And we can also integrate some more KNX devices, like a dimming actuator or Dali gateway, for example. So these are the maximum numbers, 16 different room scenarios per, KNX, per room master and uh, we have a kind of default programming in the room master so the eight first scenarios have kind of default settings. Uh, the room scenario number one is for check in, room scenario number two for check out, standby and so on. Of course all these default settings are freely configurable so you can change all the settings but this is a kind of uh, yeah, more advantage for you because we have done all the settings here for the first eight scenarios 
<clears throat> so a room scenario uh, is not only one event we can do two events for example when we call such a room scenario some new situation is called at, a, at, a, at once immediately and we can call another situation maybe via a time delay so we can specify the time when we want to call here another event and then when we call such event he sent a 8-bit telegram to the bus different two bits and so on I show it on the next slide. This here is our room master with the different room scenarios up to 16. We can call each of the scenario via our binary input, maybe our keycard reader or our magnetic grid contact, our master switch or something, or we can call this kind of room scenarios via KNX telegram from a KNX sensor inside the hotel room or maybe from the reception desk, guest check in or check out for example. And to call such a room scenario via KNX, this is a one byte telegram, so between 1 and 16. So in here you can see this is the communication object number 2, and with this communication object we can call our scenarios 1 to 16. It depends on the value of the KNX telegram. So someone maybe presses here the button or insert or remove the keycard, then we call our room scenario, and then one, the first event starts immediately. What does it mean? The <coughs> KNX room master sent here on this communication object switch 1, switch 2, yeah, 1 bit telegrams. The value depends, of course, your parameter settings. Yeah, he can also deactivate or activate the sun protection for the, for the blinds. We can call our standard KNX scene, like I explained to you before, as the 1 byte, 8 bit scene. And additionally, we can block some other devices and we can switch on our room thermostat or off. Additionally, we can change the mode, the operating mode of the sensor. This is also possible. So depending on your event here, maybe when you leave the room, remove the key card, re uh, start, recall this event to switch off, start the automatic mode of your sun protection, switch off the room thermostat and change maybe the mode into the standby. All these things are possible. And if you want, we can have here a time delay, and after some seconds, we con can call here a second ev event yeah, with another parameters. So here's a small example of our room scenario number one, which is default the check-in at the reception desk. So the hotel guest come to the to the lady, yeah, he checks in into his hotel room, and the lady sends a command via KNX into the room number 320 for example and calls the room scenario number one. So this happens via, a one, uh, via this one byte KNX telegram. So in the next step is we have inside our ETS parameter specified room scenario number one wins, means we have internal link between our inputs to the outputs and then we switch on the light for example here on the desk light as a kind of welcome light and additionally the light here in the floor. Not more. All other lights are still off. Only these two light groups here in the entrance area and maybe here on the desk light is on. <coughs> so the room master uh, send some, uh, can do more things inside our room scenario. He blocked all other inputs, our binary inputs. So now when the guest comes in inside his room and he does not insert his keycard reader, he can press here the buttons like he wants, but all other inputs are blocked. So really he has to insert his keycard and then we call another scenario. Plus the room master can send a telegram here to the room thermostat 6138 for example, switch on and go to the comfort mode. Uh, this is also possible. Uh, with this new feature of the room scenarios. So here a small, uh, yeah, a small view on our ETS parameter, how to set the parameters for, by using these scenarios. You will see it is not very complicated. At first here we can we go to the menu, enable our room scenarios 1 to 16. Yeah, you click here on the button yes I want to use for example my room scenario number one. You can write here a short description my room scenario number one is for example my check-in or my welcome scene. Uh, only for your information maximum 40 characters. So then we click here on the room scenario number one and we can describe here what should happen when we call this room scenario. 
Yeah, we want to start immediate our event, yes, and we want to call the scene internal and via bus. And here we have to write the number of the scene. For example, the scene number four means the floor light on and the desk light should switch on. So should switch on. Plus, for example, when we want to switch on the room thermostat, then we can write here room thermostat on and send the value. The value 1 means go to comfort mode. Value 2, for example, to standby. Number 3, to night mode and so on. Uh, these are all the settings which are sent to the KNX bus when we call our room scenario number 1. And here you can see the different communication objects. Here for switching 1, switching 2, these are exactly here this parameter settings for the automatic control of the shut and blinds, the 8-bit scene, the thermostat, room thermostat on and off, and here the mode which depends on this value here. Here we will see it's not very difficult here to use these room scenarios. Good, or here small overview, the next room scenario, maybe you leave the hotel room, and yeah, then you have here directed connected to a binary input the keycard reader, so we remove our keycard, send uh, uh, information here to the, to the room master. The room master is doing some internal linked features, for example. Yeah, he switched off the light here on the desk light, all other lights. But after some seconds, he calls the second event and switches off this light. So when you remove your keycard, all lights go off, your socket outlets are switched off, but not the light in the entrance area, because you stand here nearby the keycard reader, then it's not good to switch off here the light. But after some seconds, we call the second event, and then we switch off here this light. And the room master send again the information to the room thermostat, yeah, maybe for example go to the mode standby, or switch off for example. And all these things happens by using this very powerful room scenarios. Good, and here a small comparison between our different room masters, the 1-1, one, one, yeah, the room master 2-1, 3-1, 4-1. You can see here the different numbers of binary inputs <coughs> via contact scanning for all kind of potential free contacts, different outputs, number of relays, 20 amps, 6 amps, and so on, electronic outputs, uh, and so on. This is our complete family room masters with all the software features inside. Uh, remember, like this room scenarios. Good, and here the comparison about these room masters, the top arguments, the version 1.1 1 1 and the version 2.1 2 1 with all this lot of inputs and outputs, and including our fan call actuator, is especially for hotel, uh, developed especially for hotel applications. Uh, to control fan con units and to switch and, for example, the light, socket outlets and so on. So we have the software concept of these room scenarios only in these room masters, not in, all, not in other KNX devices. And yeah, we can link internal our inputs to our outputs without creating group addresses. So you can work faster and also maybe for beginners it is quite easier. Yes. So we have pre-parameterized applications which you can download from our website. Yeah, of course, you can change these pre-parameterized uh, pre settings like you want. And these room masters are more cost efficient like you use single KNX devices, like you use a binary input, a switch actuator and a fan call actuator. Here it is, more, it is cheaper than you lose one KNX device. <coughs> And when you need more KNX features in the room, like dimming, for example, or you need more shutters, then you can, of course, add here another KNX device and can communicate via the room master, of course, to the other devices. Good, so far the family of the room master. Uh, I'd like to introduce you also kind of uh, devices for room solutions, the so-called I.O. actuator. Uh, for your information, these I.O. actuators, we have two devices with eight outputs and 12 inputs, or we have one with four inputs yeah, and four outputs. This is a so-called I.O. actuator. We have the same principle like in the room master between linking input and outputs, so you can use it without group addresses. But the different to our room master is we have limited functions. So here we have no room scenarios yeah, and other things. So really we have reduced the software features of these I.O. actuators. 
And inside we have only 6 amp relays without manual operation. <clears throat> so here when we have uh, a look on our parameters, the possibility of the inputs, you will see all these inputs, we can use it as a switch sensor with different possibilities, long, short or blocking, we can send up to three group addresses and we can send values, uh, maybe to call a scene, a one byte or two byte, but not more. It is not possible to connect here a button and to send, for example, dimming telegrams or shutter telegrams to a shutter actuator. This is with these devices not possible because it is only available here the switching function or to send a value. And the outputs are also limited in the functionality. We have only uh, the possibility to set a parameter. It is normally closed or open and a staircase-like function, maybe a time. No more functionality, no flashing. So we have here reduced the function of the devices. Okay, here the ETS parameter. Yeah, you will see switching or values and no more possibilities. Yeah, the outputs are here also limited normally closed, normally open, time functions, yeah, of course the status, this is of course possible, but no other functions inside this yeah, I.O. actuator. And here again the example to link an input, click on here in the input, switch sensor output A, go here to the button, internal connection and select your output. So it's very easy to link an input to an output without group addresses, finish. So this is here the principle of this I.O. actuator. So here the I.O. actuator 4.6 means for example we have here our four inputs, our four outputs yeah, and here in a small apartment yeah, or a small, small room for example we need only this room, this I.O. actuator and our traditional or standard push button and our four light groups without using group addresses. Yeah, or here in this room, for example, with a small office and another one, a kitchen, for example, and a small gas toilet. The same principle, we can link input to outputs, but the maximum number here, eight switch outputs, and here we have maximum number of eight binary inputs. Good, but why we have this IO actuator? We have the room master, of course. But now we want to uh, realize also small projects uh, and we want to replace the conventional installation because some KNX devices are too expensive but here with this I.O. actuator we have the possibility to use very easy a kind of group or central commands yeah, by using here our internal links yeah, with a conventional installation it is not possible or very very complex and cost intensive. <clears throat> and we have now in this project KNX it means you can also add more KNX devices or we can send commands later for example from a visualization or from other sensors here into our I.O. Uh, actuator. And we need only a KNX power supply, no other devices is necessary and the installation of course is easy, here only the standard push button or magnetic read contacts or something and here our load, our socket, our, uh, our light, uh, our, um, our lamps or something else. And though when you compare it with a traditional installation, yeah, you will see this is a very, I think, good solution uh, to replace it by this so-called I.O. actuator. Good. What about marketing material? About all our room solutions, uh, you will find it on our website. So go go to abb.com/knix. You find here all information about KNX in your different languages and so on. And here on the, on this uh, maybe a little bit button, we have a so-called uh, landing page or microsite, which is special with a special link to pages for the room master. So now when you click here, then you will find further information uh, like this one. Then you will uh, then we will forward it here to this special kind of of page uh, web page about the room master with further information videos, you will see here also a small video clip about the room master and you get more details. So here we have also the link to the brochures, you can download all these brochures as PDF files in German or English language yeah, and uh, more details about this so-called room masters in special hotel applications and the room masters 3.1 and 4.1 for example. 
Additionally, in this uh, web page, you can download the pre-configured templates for the room masters, yeah, where you can fill out in a PDF or Word file how you have linked the inputs to the outputs and so on, yeah, and print it out. This is also available, including the planning templates. Additionally, we have also an e-learning module, but this e-learning module is for the room master 2.1 which is maybe also some years old, but it shows you the principle of this room master and especially in hotel application. So we will see it here in different slides which are animated, how it works and how you can use this room master. Good, so far additionally you will get the feedback email uh, in the next few days, including this presentation and some more marketing material and a small presentation about a hotel which is called Neu Heidelberg. It is not far away here from ABB Stotz Kontakt. Maybe some of you have stayed in this hotel or the next time when you come to ABB Heidelberg you can book here a hotel room. Yeah, this hotel is full of ABB KNX including the room master you will see here in the guest rooms the room master 2.1 with the room thermostat and uh, you will get this presentation about this ho hotel, what we have realized with KNX, including the visualization uh, as a small, maybe very nice reference project. Good, we have also a kind of video clip about the room controller, you know, the box with the four or the eight slots, but this room controller may be some years old, and you will see this video clip uh, is also not up to date, but it describes still the principle of this room controller. So I think we are near the end of this webinar. Um, I'd like to sh give you the information about the next webinar which takes place on the 5th of November uh, in one month. So in this webinar we will introduce you everything about metering and KNX, our so-called meter interface, ZSS, yeah, the energy module, energy actuator, and of course the different types of energy meter. So remember the date, but we will send you, of course, invitation letter, yeah, and you can subscribe again here to this webinar. Uh, webinars are also offered not only by ABB, also by the KNX Association. Now today is the 1st of October, the KNX Association has launched the ETS-5 and now when you want to know more about this ETS-5 you can subscribe to a webinar from the KNX Association. So go to knx.org and on the button webinars and then you can see here a list of different kind of webinars, for example the basics of KNX or about the ETS apps yeah, or the new ETS-5. Yeah, so we can also take part on these webinars. They are absolutely independent ABB. Yeah, and then you can listen to these webinars and you get more details. This is also possible and maybe I think it's a good thing. I recommend to you please take part also here on these webinars. Good, so far I think we are the end of this webinar. I check the chat. Now we have no questions so far. Good. I think we can close the webinar. Thank you for taking part on this webinar today about our room solutions, about our room master, room controller. We are looking forward to see you again on our next webinar on the 5th of November. Have a nice day and goodbye. Ciao, goodbye. goodbye. See you next